Chris Regan's here, world-renowned business journalist, former podcast host, former Goldman Sachs trader, current podcast host with us now. All right, Trish, am I on to something here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're spot on. I mean, we're, we're sort of broken politically. And the problem is the train has left the station in terms of the economic policy that is already in play, in place, and leading to all this inflation. Now, I do believe that this administration should have done more, should have been more thoughtful, should have had more foresight, frankly, um, as well as the Federal Reserve. I would argue, Leland, because we had two things coming at us. We had money printing over here from the Fed. We had COVID stimulus checks galore from both Trump and Biden. And then on top of it, you add a $1.9 trillion stimulus package into the thing. And what do you know? You got a whole lot of money out there, right? And the more money you print, the more money in circulation, then it stands to reason the less value each of those dollars had. And so consequently, and I've been warning of this for the last year and a half, like a broken record, we will have inflation and we're gonna have more inflation and we've got it now. And I anticipate yeah. this 40 year high is gonna stick with us for a while. Uh, otherwise, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the play? One of the reasons we <laughs> wanted to have you tonight is because when you were a young Goldman Sachs trader, you were dealing with Venezuela who went through hyperinflation and terrible times because of big social spending, uh, print, the printing of money, uh, and the like. Obviously, we're not there yet. But have you seen anything from either the administration or the Federal Reserve that acknowledges that there's going to have to be real pain and much worse pain than all of us are feeling right now in order to stop inflation and keep us from becoming Venezuela? Well, the administration is never going to say that, right, number one. And hopefully, we're not on the trajectory that Venezuela was on. I mean, they had a a leader there when when I first got to Goldman, uh, Hugo Chavez had just come to power in Venezuela, and and that was a total total utter disaster. We were hopeful actually that he might be okay. We thought Brazil was the real problem with Lula. Turned out Lula actually was willing to put in a whole lot of capitalist policies that helped Brazil's economy way back then, but. Chavez, forget about it. I mean, he he cleared the courts, right, and, and stacked it with his buddies. So let that be a warning on the Supreme Court. And then printed money. And, you know, for some time he was okay because he had oil prices high. But once that changed, it, it really was a disaster. The reality is you cannot print your way to prosperity. That is sort of econ 101. It's never worked, whether it be Venezuela, whether it be Cuba, whether it be the former USSR. Plenty of economies have tried it. It does not work. I um. I, I certainly hope, you know, and I, I don't think we're there. And, you know, Bernie Sanders didn't get the nomination, though. You know, who knows? Maybe his hat will be back in the ring in a couple of years if he makes it. But um, I, I certainly hope we don't go down that socialist yeah. path a la one of those crazy countries. But um, the, the, I think that it stands to reason, and we're seeing the fruits of this right now. When you print money, it, the money has less value, and your economy and everyday Americans suffer. Think about this from the other side. Uh, what do we look for? We've all watched the Dow go down, the NASDAQ go down 27 percent, S&P 500 down 18 uh, percent since the start of the year. Uh, what is the good news that is going to turn the market around and more importantly is going to turn around this trend of everything that we have in our pocket today buys less tomorrow? I think that we need to see inflation be reined in. We need to see healthy growth. I mean, we just had a quarter of a 1.4% decline. Now, granted, you know, the, the comparisons were tough because this time last year we were doing so much better compared to the previous year, um, given that COVID was there. So I think we need some sort of transparency, if you would, in terms of what earnings are going to be. But don't forget, I mean, we've seen things like this before. I remember reporting every day on the stock market, the NASDAQ back in the year 2000, I was mm. sitting there going, well, how, how does this make any sense, right, at all, <laughs> that we're dealing with such crazy high valuations? Yeah. You know what, Leland? The NASDAQ went down 75% right. in the span of less than two years, and it took 15 years, think to about get back, that, yeah. to recover. Well, yeah. look, look you know, all, all bleeding stops eventually, right, as the ER docs like to say. 94% of Americans concerned about inflation. I'd love to meet the other 6%. Um, <laughs> Two-thirds of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Um, are we yet getting to the point where people are going to start 
cutting back on things to the point that companies are going to start laying people off, which means uh, people buy even fewer things. And we get into that terrible uh, word from the 1970s, something neither you nor I covered, uh, of stagflation, where we've got high unemployment because of layoffs and still the high inflation. That's the sort of million dollar question, if you would, right? Stagflation trillion is a very, yeah, right? <laughs> which, which keeps going up. It should be like a trillion dollar question. Um, it, look, I, I, I guess it's all going to come down to whether or not the economy can support this. Right now, it's crazy. I mean, try going out to dinner or booking a hotel. My kids are like, why aren't we going on vacation? I'm like, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm not going to pay two or three times the amount of money right. I paid for the exact same hotel. But people are doing it. And so that shows you that strangely there's this demand there. And Leland, I'll tell you, it's weird because you look at the sentiment numbers. Consumers don't feel very good right now. People have kind of a malaise similar to the 1970s. They're not very optimistic on the economy. And yet the restaurants are crowded. There's plenty of hotels booked. People are getting on airlines. So it's a strange phenomena. But the question will come become, does it stay like this? At some point, do people change their spending habits because right. they, they can't pay these levels? Well, if, if two-thirds of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and things keep getting more expensive, then at some point, the economics reality sets in and people do start changing their behavior. Trish, this was great. Thank you very much. It's good to see you, you again. Good to see you, too. Yeah, this was Thanks, awesome. Really. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.